Hello, Super Brain Nacho Ninjas. I hope you all are having a wonderful week. I miss you all so very much and can't wait until we can be back together in the classroom again, learning together. But in the meantime, we're gonna be learning from afar, but today I want to focus on science. Do you remember the last time that we worked together and we were working on science? We were learning about how all living things, plants and animals, need things to survive. Do you remember what those three main things were that animals need to survive? Well, they need air, food, and water. And we were playing that game where all of the animals needed to get these three things in order to survive. Do you remember what the fourth thing was that they needed in order to survive? They need to not be eaten. So we talked about how animals use their different body structures or different parts of their body in order to get these things and different body structures that help them so that they don't get eaten. Well, this week during science, I want you to think about an animal. You can choose any animal you want. Let me give you some ideas. Here are just some pictures that I printed out of some animals that I thought of first in my mind. You might be thinking about a bear, maybe a swan, a cheetah, or a fish. You might also think of a plant or any other living thing. This week I want you to think about how does your living thing get what it needs to survive? Let's do one together. Let's do the grizzly bear. So a grizzly bear, what body structures does it use to get air? Can you imagine a grizzly bear right now? using its nose and its snout in order to breathe in and get air. A grizzly bear uses its snout and its nose to get air. What about food? What do you think a grizzly bear eats? I've seen videos of grizzly bears eating fish and they take their claws and they go right over to a river and they reach in and they get a fish, usually a salmon. So I know that's how a grizzly bear gets its food. It uses its claws and its paw to reach in and grab a fish and eat it with its mouth and its teeth. What about water? Well, you're probably thinking that bear is right next to a river. It probably drinks water that way, lifting its head down and drinking the water right out of a river. So that's how a grizzly bear gets these things in order to survive. Well, what do you think about how does a grizzly bear not be eaten? I know big grizzly bears probably don't have very many predators, but if you think about the cubs, what do the cubs do in order to stay safe? Well, I think I can imagine that a grizzly bear cub might stay close to its mama in order to survive. A grizzly bear cub might also hide in a cave. Those are things that it does to stay alive and to stay safe. Now you might pick one of these other animals that we didn't talk about today, or you can think of any other living thing. And on a piece of paper, I want you to draw. How does your animal get air, food, and water? in order to survive. How does it not get eaten? Draw a picture and point to those body structures that help it survive. I'd love to see your pictures. Have your families send it to me and I can share it on a video. Well, that's what we're gonna be talking about in science this week. I want you to share with your families what you've learned about living things and what they need in order to survive. I'll try to get back on here in the next couple days and share another video with you about some things that have been going on in the Renton Academy community. We have some great things. All right, 
I'll talk to you all soon. Send me pictures of your animals. Bye.